All right, so I'm going to talk about how we take small melodic ideas uh, or, or sequences and how we try to expand them by moving across octaves. And we're going to focus on not, not taking it this way, but sort of getting out of that up and down and getting more of a diagonal uh, motion, whether, whether going diagonally um, this way or diagonal this way or even just moving up the fretboard this way. And uh, I think the thing that's great about doing that is that you cover a lot of range and it, it makes you explore the different um, you know, octaves and areas on the guitar instead of just staying in one little spot. And I think that's something that's good for people to sort of break out of. Uh, so the first thing I'm, I'm gonna talk about is a very simple series of notes. It's sort of a melodic series of notes. And it's, it's part of a scale, but because it's not all the notes of the scale, the melody emphasizes some cool notes. Uh, if it's an E minor, which is always fun, um, I'm just going to play B, E, F sharp, and G. So basically, I'm just outlining a minor uh, chord with an added ninth. So you know, that sounds really good against E, and also sounds really good against C as, as a, more of a Lydian sound. All right, so very simple to get used to, just one, two, three, four. And then the next thing to do, and this is probably the easiest way to make something move diagonally, is just play it in the next octave on the next two strings. And the guitar is laid out uh, perfectly for this because you don't have to change fingerings at all. It's the same exact shape. You just have to move up to the next octave. So it would be right here. And then finally. And once again, the shape is the same in all three spots. Um, now as far as playing it, there's a couple of different things you can do. You can use it as uh, a sort of um, a melodic idea or, or basic areas for melodic ideas. So you might be starting down. That's more of using it to play a melody and uh, spanning the, the range of the guitar in three octaves. Um, another way you can use it is as a passage or as a run to link lower notes to higher notes. So something like that might be uh, just actually playing it through all the octaves. And up on top there, um, as I bent the F sharp, I was, I was making a reference to the D major chord. And, and all that stuff, you know, it sounds good to, to play different uh, chords or to imply different chords over um, constant roots. Now taking the same idea, the three octaves moving diagonal in E minor, um, and by adding one more note to it, adding a C to it, it makes the pattern more conducive for playing faster type of licks as opposed to more melodic passages. So we're going to add a C. And what I would do instead of um, picking all those notes is I'd come up with a pattern that was involved a little bit of a hammer on and slide. So more like. So I'm playing the first note, hammering on the second note, playing the third note, and the fourth, and then sliding. All right, so going back down, so you see how much fun. All right, so that's ascending and descending. As far as the descending, I'm just picking sliding down.
it's kind of get like an alternate thing, but with the, the hammer on sort of taking the place of some of the picking. Right. So I think you, you get this sort of skipping feeling. Yeah, it kind of feels like you're skipping. Same thing. So it's like... Um, and now also you could make sort of faster licks out of that if you just want to stay in one spot and sort of do a cyclic thing, which which is always fun when you're, you're really going for it and, and you want to do something that creates a lot of tension and builds. Um, so that same pattern, I would just pick it like all alternate. <laughs> do it that way it has a, a triplet feel to it a 16th note triplet and I might practice that by playing just the first part by itself and then trying to get That was a, an example where we just moved using octaves, so playing the same pattern in three different octaves. octaves. So another idea I like to do um, is it, it, uh, have a little bit more movement to, to span you know, uh, a larger range. And what I would do, it's a little more difficult because now you're not just going to be playing the same shape. All right? And let's add in all the notes, so the missing the other missing note um, basically just be a D. So to keep this simple, we'll just keep it in groups of three uh, notes per string. Right. So um, basically, you just have to play the one position. And I guess the easiest way to look at it is wherever your pinky ends up, you're going to play the note that's right before it with your first finger. And that's how you're going to move positions. So we, you know, actually end up spanning from B to B up here. So what is that? Four octaves. One, two, three, four. So it goes up higher. <laughs> One more. <laughs> so um, I'll play that a little bit slower once. In The best thing that this is useful for, I think, is to do passages or runs that start from a low note and, and end up on a high. Um, and there are so many different patterns and things you can do within that. You know, obviously, the most simple thing you can do is just take the three notes and create a triplet pattern. Now you could either repeat the pattern in each position which is fun, or you can just go straight up, you know, so you might go, um... 